Hey you, what up? Welcome to my channel or welcome back, I'm Mariam. Today it's Faves X Fails time for the month of May, uploaded in June as we always do. This is a roundup video in which I talk about all of my favorite makeup products for the month. Also show you why they are my favorite on my face as I create a look. This look that you see right here on my face that I quite like, I think it's very fresh, very easy, just a little bit of glam, but not too glam, something that I still think is very wearable that you can definitely make your own so there is a tutorial portion with these videos that I love to create because a lot of it is using my favorite products that I already know and love of course of course of course always expect some fails in which I talk about the products that did not work for me with that let's get into this video remember to subscribe if you aren't already hit that notification bell because it's very important so that you can be notified of my Wednesdays and Sundays videos and now let's get into it faves X fails for the month of May. Notes, faves, X fails. Here we go. Starting with primer. This month's failed primer is the Milani No Pore Zone Mattifying Primer. So this one, although pretty affordable at $11, I really wanted to love. However, I didn't actually love because it has this very finicky ingredient called dimethicone, which is a form of a silicone. And this ingredient does not mesh very well with a lot of different foundations. So for a primer to have this silicone as the number one ingredient makes it kind of finicky. That's just the bottom line. I wanted to like it, but I didn't. Not in my fave category this time, but what is in my fave category is still the Essence My Skin Perfector Tinted Primer that I am going to apply all over my face. It's not a new favorite. It's an old favorite for many months now. I will say maybe five, maybe six. And this one, let me tell you, it also has dimethicone as an ingredient, but it's not the main ingredient. Looks like it is the third ingredient, which means that it's not as strong, but in fact, the main ingredient in this one is something called isodotacane, which is an emollient. So that ingredient gives you that smooth application, that flawless finish, also helps retain moisture, and also gives you that nice weightless feel, which is why I love this product so much. At this point, I'm not really trying to convince you to get it. I think everyone who watches my videos at this point knows everyone and their mother knows that this is a product that I love. It feels so great on the skin. It mattifies the skin minimally, not too much, but it definitely perfects it, perfects the texture. And for someone like myself, who is very oily, acne prone, who suffers from enlarged pores due to acne, from some acne scars due to acne, this is a product that my skin loves and I can't rave about it and recommend it enough. Done. Moving right along. In the foundation category, we have a fave this month and we also have a fail. So shall we start with the fave? Let's. This month I am loving the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Tinted Hydrating Gel Cream. So this is $30, but it also comes in a much smaller size at about $19, I wanna say, like a travel version. Oh, here it is. Bloop. I love this one because it has broad spectrum SPF. It gives you just a little bit of coverage, but it makes your skin look very natural, just like your skin, but a little bit better. And I think this is perfect, super lightweight for the summertime. I love the way that this one pairs with my Essence Tinted Primer. Just looks so dewy and so natural on the skin without being oily, it wears so well. I've been loving it, not a new product, but Bare Minerals has added some shades recently, and so they've kind of relaunched it, which is why I'm including it. I also did a quick little roundup video of my favorite foundations for 2021 so far, and this was in the number two slot, you guys. So you definitely have to check out that video if you haven't already. This product is just so excellent. Like I said, SPF 30, wears extremely well, sheer coverage, but very perfecting, smoothing, oil-free. It's basically a three-in-one. A three-in-one for the light coverage days where you just want it to be your moisturizer, also your primer, also your SPF. But if you want a little bit more coverage, you can definitely pair it with a primer of your choice to give it just a little bit more oomph. This is the IT Cosmetics Complexion Perfection Brush in collaboration with Ulta. It says so here, but it's rubbed off. But basically this is the Complexion Perfection Brush that I love and I recommend. As with most SPFs, obviously you have to reapply this every couple of hours for the best coverage and the best protection, but I gotta let you in on a little secret. I wore this product as a three-in-one the other day for Memorial Day picnic, and let me tell you, I was the only one who did not get burned in the face. <laughs> and no, I did not reapply.
the skin. Observe, so good, we love. But what we don't love this month is the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Oil-Free Natural Skin Perfector with Broad Spectrum SPF 20 Sunscreen. This was a streaky AF and also expensive AF. At $47, I expected this to be great. I expected this to be excellent and it's not. I wanted to love it. I tried it with different primers. I tried it with different setting powders and I could not blend this in. $33 blends out like a dream, looks so dewy on the skin, so natural, you can barely tell you have makeup on, but yet your skin is so perfect, or a streaky AF mess. I rest my case. Moving right along to, ooh, you guys, I have a new favorite concealer, and you probably already know what it is, because I've talked about it so many times before. I'm talking about the Fenty Beauty Bright Fix Eye Brightener or Illuminator. So this is what? $25. There's about, I want to say 20 shades, maybe a little more, more, maybe a little less. What I love about this is that it is absolutely weightless, flawless. It looks natural, like you're not covering up anything, like you just have a bright, refreshed, awake under eye, and you need the littlest amount of product. Like this much is more than enough. I like to warm it up between my fingers, just like that. The shade that I use is Melon, which is a little bit pinker and just a little bit brighter than my complexion, but you can definitely find like a more skin matching shade if that's what you want. But for me, Melon works just great. For right now, for the summertime, I may get a slightly deeper shade, but look at that. Just a couple of taps and the under eye just looks lifted and it looks completely covered up without looking covered up, without looking cakey, without looking fakey, without looking like makeup. This is definitely Fenty's best complexion product to date, at least in my book it is. I just can't see anyone not liking it. It's so easy to use and it looks so great. And it also feels really great on the skin. Not heavy at all, not creasy, just great. Also, you can layer it if you want, if you want more of like a glam sort of under eye, but I don't really use it for a glam effect, although I probably will in the coming months, come Sha Girl summer. But just for right now, to refresh in my whole complexion, just to lift my under eye, just to give me an awake, bright look, just a little bit goes a long way. And I love it so much, I can't rave about it enough. Also has a blurring effect, I mean, it's just good. And it's actually the only under eye product that I've tried this month, so I don't have a fail for the month. But let me tell you, I usually find find an under eye product probably like once a year. It is very rare for me to find an under eye product that I consider to be this good. So this is definitely going to make it in my best of 2021 list. Watch out. I just don't see anything on the market right now that can beat it. There I said it. What I'm gonna do real quick is set that with my one size translucent setting powder. Why? Because this is still a liquid or creamy type of product that needs to be set. And if you have any type of wrinklage, if you have any type of lines under your eye, any product will need to be set with a powder, unless it's a powder. So I'm just gonna quickly set that, and I'm also gonna set this like nasal fold here, and maybe just bring that down to my pore zone. I've already raved about this translucent powder so many times in my previous videos. It's still a fave for setting the under eye and also for smoothing out the pores. So now that I've set just my under eye, I am going to move on to blush because this month, my favorite blush is a liquid blush from Natasha Denona. Yes, I am talking about the puff paints. Where's the third one? Ah, yes, it's in my makeup bag because I loved it so much. I wore it earlier today because it is just so good. So this product is called the Puff Paint Liquid Blush Serum. Comes in three shades. The third shade is like a tan that I think is great for every day if you're wearing no makeup at all, but you don't want to look dead. Basically, this is what I've been using it for. But this color is absolutely my favorite. Daria, it's just so beautiful and so springy and the formula is so good, and the price is so right at $22. A little bit goes a long way. You don't need a lot of product, just like a couple of dots here and there. It applies so great with a brush, or you can also blend it out with your fingers, but I don't wanna do that today, because if it works with a brush, why do I wanna contaminate my fingers? I'm gonna use this Sephora blush brush and just kind of distribute that all across my cheekbone. Ugh, so damn good. This is exactly how I was acting the first time that I tried it a couple of videos ago. This was me 
just like making sounds. But really, truly, it blends out so easily. There's no caking, there's no streaking, there's no smudging, there's no moving of the foundation underneath. Though I have not tried it over powder. In Natasha Denona's description that came with the blush, it actually said to use this on top of your bare skin or on top of foundation, but not on top of powder. So I decided to listen to them. I think I'm actually going to try out the darkest shade. Sadly, they don't have the shade names on the bottom of the packaging, which is fine, I guess, but would have been a nice thing for me. We're just gonna add a couple of dots here and there. So I wanna see how this blends out. This might be a little too much blush for me. Oh my God, but it is just so stunning, you guys. Like, do you see that? This is vibrant. This is beautiful. Imagine this on a deeper complexion. This is it. Also, what I love is that it can actually sit on your face for a couple of seconds. You don't actually have to rush to blend it out. It blends out effortlessly. And I'm just gonna take whatever's on the brush, kind of just bring it up here, and then also a little bit on the nose, just to kind of tie everything together. Cause this is a lot of blush for me. I'm gonna make it work, of course, don't get scared. But first I have to kind of evenly distribute it. This is great, this is great. The tan shade is awesome too. I feel like that one is actually even more pigmented if that makes sense even though it's a tan shade that's kind of close to your natural skin tone or to like a skin tone but the tan shade i find is like surprisingly popping you can say i love this one you can say i recommend it so right now i'm gonna take my charlotte t airbrush flawless finish powder i'm gonna powder down the rest of my face first under the blush just to kind of create a little separation you see what i'm doing and then I'm just gonna swirl that across all of those areas that I hit. And look how pretty. I'm telling you guys, you need this one. I want more shades, Natasha Denona. I mean, honestly, I think I might love this one more than I love the Fenty Cream Blushes. Yeah, I know, those are bomb. Those are so good. They're so flexible, such great shades. But this one, there's just something about this one. It makes me feel prettier. That's the truth. Okay, complexion is coming together. You see it? Let's talk about a blush and a powder that I did not love this time around. And the reason why I'm lumping them into one category is because it's from the same brand and it's also from the same collection. So I am talking about the Shantakai Gorgeous Packaging Flower Power Blush and also setting powder. Now these two products are expensive. They're not just expensive, they are expensive AF. This powder right here is $84. Yeah, you heard me right, it's $84. And people complain about the Charlotte Tilbury powder. This is $84 and let me tell you, although the packaging is really cute and the pan itself is super intricate and gorgeous to look at, this really doesn't do anything to your actual complexion. This is almost, I'm sad to say, a waste of gorgeous packaging and a waste of product. I don't really get it, honestly. The reviews are pretty good, but this was just too light and too unnoticeable for me. I didn't see the difference before and after application. It didn't feel like it was perfecting my skin, didn't feel like it was blurring it, didn't feel like it was setting anything. It was just like a veil of nothing. It was almost an illusion. Same thing with the blush. The blush Blush is a little bit more affordable at $50 for this teeny tiny pan size. This is like the size of a Pat McGrath eyeshadow, you guys. Granted, it does come with a brush that you could purchase separately for I don't know how much more. And with this brush, the blush applies quite well and the color is nice or relatively nice, I guess, if you like this sort of shade. But is it really worth it? Are we at a point in our lives where we're willing to spend so much money on a mediocre product just because the packaging is cute? I don't think so. I don't think so, at least not for me. I mean, it's 2021. We've got options, like I say in every video. I just keep on trying to drive that home. We've got so many options. So for brands to come out with mediocre products, it's just not good enough. Womp womp. All right, let's move on to bronzer, shall we? This month, I got to try out the Fire Queen palette. It's called a Foroscope palette from Benefit. It's got the original Hula bronzer, also two blushes and a highlighter, all of which I really liked. I thought it was a good compilation. I like the colors. I love the original Hula bronzer. It's always been a fave of mine. In fact, this was my very first bronzing or shall I say contouring product before contouring was even a thing. I started using it, I think in high school, quickly learned that I did not like to contour my nose because it's already really pointy. And if I contour it, it looks almost too pointy, like bewitched. 
pointy. So now this, I believe, is $36 for the four. I like that the palette is a nice travel size, but not too small. It still feels sufficient enough to keep on your makeup table and just open up every day when you need to bronze up and blush up and highlight up. But I don't know, it kind of made me fall back in love with Hoola that I've always loved, but now I've kind of rediscovered it. And this is what I've been using for bronzer, just to add a little bit of definition, just to warm up and also narrow my forehead, add a little dimension to it, because it is wide and flat. Just add a little bit of warmth to my cheekbone. You know, a little something something. Also, I gotta say the highlighter in this palette, Blaze, this shade is really stunning. It's kind of subtle upon the swatch, but on the cheek, it is really, really lovely. I'm actually gonna use that later when I do highlighter because I have a different highlighter to talk about, but this one I do like. So I really, really like this whole palette. Now on the other hand, and sticking to the bronzer category, this month I sadly did not love the new Benefit Hula Glow Bronzer. I thought I did it first when I initially reached for it in one of my trying out new makeup videos. Thought it was cute, you know? I love the idea of a glowy version of the Hula, but the problem with this one is that it was just too shimmery. It was a little too metallic for my liking. It didn't really lay right on the skin. In fact, I felt like it highlighted a lot of my imperfections. The formula just wasn't right. Like, yes, I know, there are certain bronzers that have just that hit of subtle shimmer that actually give you dimension, that actually help to hide your flaws. But that's not the case with this product. No, it's not. And for $30, hmm, I'd rather spend $6 more and get a whole palette with the original Hoola and also two blushes, one of which is shimmery, the other one of which has a hint of shimmer, subtle shimmer, plus also a highlighter. So those are just my thoughts, you know? Those are just my thoughts. Is it a cute idea? Yeah but I just didn't think it was great. Moving right along. So we have got nothing new in the brow category. I'm still wearing my beloved Benefit 24 hour brow setter. You see, I love tons of products from Benefit. I'm wearing it today, which is why my brows are nicely glued down. I also am wearing my NYX brow pen. I don't have it handy. Oh yes, I do. My NYX brow pen, Lift and Snatch, that I still love. Still great. No new products this month. I will say just like with concealers, it's very difficult for me to find brow products that I like. Maybe because I'm very picky, Maybe because my brows are very unruly and it's hard for them to stay down with just any gel. It seems like only once a year I find a good brow product that I stick with for a year. Would love to hear your recommendations. Sound off. Moving right along. Two, your favorite category, the eyeshadow palettes and also the eyeshadows. I have different products this month that I like. Let's start with these Morphe 2 X D'Amelio Sisters shadow sticks. Now, a lot of these I have been reaching for just because they're really cute colors, very everyday, but some pops of colors and they're just so easy to apply and blend out. And right now that I am just reaching more towards easy everyday makeup, these have been my go-tos. Not every color is as great as the four that I'm holding up, the lilac, is absolute trash, I hated it, never touched it again, very, very dry, completely different formula. But these have been great. So I'm gonna use Lucky Penny, give myself a little base all across my lid because I totally forgot my eyeshadow primer in the other room. Today we're skipping primer, we're just gonna go for a nice base all across the lid like that, boom, bam. I apply this one eye at a time, then blend out quickly. I mean, that right there is a look, it's so easy. I can't remember how much these are exactly, but pretty sure they're fairly inexpensive, as with most Morphe products. So I like these and I recommend these. Just the four specific colors. The Lucky Penny, the Upon a Star, the Bubblegum, and the Fingers Crossed. Another eyeshadow product that I have been reaching for a lot this month, and I gotta say I've been loving it a lot, is the ColourPop Super Shock Shadows. These new colors are so gorgeous and so great. Just like perfect punchy, but not too punchy for the spring summer. Got a nice green here. Got this lovely, just stunning orange that I have been dipping into almost every single day whenever I want just a little bright pop. Let's just pop that to the inner half of that. Look how pretty. There's some beautiful gold flecks in there. The formula is incredible. The price is phenomenal at $6. And by the way, these are now on sale for like $4.20. It's 
Specifically, this shade is on sale. Maybe others too, but definitely check them out. Links below as always for your convenience. They are my affiliate links. You are not obligated to use them. Just know that if you do use them, I will get a small, tiny little commission from your purchase. So if you wanna support me, if you wanna support this channel, go ahead and use the link. So cute. Love these a lot. Moving right along. I guess maybe you guys already guessed that this month's palette, specifically the Zendo palette from Natasha Denona, is in my faves category. Did you guess it? I'm sure you did. It's a great palette. It doesn't look as pretty or as enticing on camera or in photography the way that it does in person and specifically in natural light. When I first opened this up, I was sitting in front of my window. It was open and the sun was shining and these colors were just speaking to me. I saw so many different variations of colors. I saw all the different complexities of every single shade and I really wanted to play with this palette. It feels very spring, summer, fall and holiday to me. So I would call this a year round palette and the quality is outstanding. Also, this is a $65 palette from Natasha Denona. So cheaper than her $129 palettes that are larger, but the quality is just the same. So I recommend it. I love it and it inspires me also. I feel like I created a very cool look using this palette and you can too. Let's use some warm colors. Let's do a little brown shade here called Mindful. I'm just gonna wing that out like that. Then also take it back like that. Anyway, just added the same shape to this other eye real quick off camera. This one feels like a cream to powder shadow. It's just so buttery. So incredible. Oh my God. Don't know how they do it. All right. And then I'm just going to blend that out with a clean little dome brush. Just cleaning up the top, keeping that line kind of solid, you know? Let's do another shade. Let's grab this shade here called Balance. I'm just going to go in with the same brush and just add a little bit more of that. We're blending like that, like that. And then I'm going to quickly blend that out again. All right, cute. So now I'm going to add a bit of Aura, which is just a peachy, shimmery shade. And I'm going to add that to that space. I don't really care if I'm overlapping the line of that liner. Man, do you see how pretty that is? Something about that is just cool. I'm going to etch out that eye socket a bit more. And that's it for this palette. I'm going to go back in with the Lucky Penny shadow stick. Just add a bit of that my lower lash line, just to connect everything, blend it out. My video isn't complete without a cat hair. I'm gonna add that peachy shadow underneath just to seal everything in like that, no big deal. Moving right along to another set of palettes that I like that are in my faves category this month. I am talking about the Urban Decay X Prince palettes. Yeah, these two. We've heard a lot of different opinions. A lot of Prince fans came out to share their thoughts. <laughs> we have heard their thoughts. We have read their thoughts. We've acknowledged their thoughts. But I'm here to just speak strictly about the product. And the product, I gotta say, is actually really great quality and I loved it, especially this palette right here. So because I got this in PR, it didn't actually have a cardboard packaging, so I don't remember the name of this palette, so I'm just referring to it as the black palette as opposed to the purple palette. But the black palette has the gold glitter backdrop, and again, it's one of those palettes that doesn't look so great on film or in photography. It actually looks pretty muted and pretty boring. The colors do not look very vibrant. They don't seem like they represent prints very well well at all at first glance, but after I swatched all of these shades on my swatch model's arm, after I applied all of them, I saw how great quality they were. I really feel like Urban Decay stepped up their eyeshadow quality. Yeah, I really think they tried to give their best for this collection and I saw it. I saw it come together and it honestly made me feel really good. Now this palette I will say is a little too purple for my liking. There's just way too many lavendery shades that wouldn't necessarily work for every everyone and although again they all swatched pretty well they applied really well something about this one just wasn't speaking to me but again i'm not gonna rule it out it's not my failed palette by any means because again they really stepped up the quality and i loved the quality of the eyeshadows and now to address the elephant in the room am i a prince fan yeah i am and i've been one since i was about three when i first heard of him from my aunt do i know every single prince song no 
I don't. As a matter of fact, I didn't even speak English until I was about 10 or 11 years old. How would I know the lyrics and the names to Prince songs? Anyway, you don't have to know all of Prince's songs to be a Prince fan. Just like you don't need to be a Prince fan to know all Prince songs, right? I rest my case. One other thing, I absolutely loved the Urban Decay X Prince Kajal pencils from this collection. These were so good. These were excellent. And I actually forgot how much I used to love Kajal pencils back when I was in my early 20s, back when I used to just rim my entire eye with black liner and smoke it out because I thought I was goth one day and then the next day I was going to the club. But that's all besides the point. This Kajal pencil is thick and it is beautiful. So although I really don't have a place for it today with this eye makeup look because I really want my look to be a little softer. This is one of those super black, super punchy, super potent types of liners that will give you that beautiful black base that you could easily smudge out, easily blend out to give you that rock and roll sort of smoky eye or one of those underslept 90s supermodel vibes. Also, it will give you a ferocious cat eye. Basically, it's a product that is very versatile and that you could use for a lot of different things. So I love it. Speaking of liners, I've also been loving this Joa Line Up Liquid Eyeliner. You guys, this is a dupe for KVD. Before it was KVD Tattoo Liner, you know that one that everyone used to love but then kind of stopped wearing for a reason? Well, this one is a dupe. It's much cheaper. I think it's like eight or nine dollars. So what I like to do with this one outside of the twiggies is basically create precise lines. That's what I like to do, like a super precise wing. This is also great for that inner corner trendy liner. So I've been reaching for this one a lot lately. It's just really easy to use and really, really good quality. And it does not mess up if you use it over eyeshadow. I kind of feel like the tattoo liner used to do. It used to mess up like the moment you rub it over anything powdery. I'm gonna leave my wings alone for a sec and move on to this Dragon Beauty Explicit Mascara that I've also been loving a lot, you guys. I'm actually gonna curl my lashes first. Not too much though, because I don't want them to be curled. I just want them to have a bit of a lift. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add this mascara to actually the entire lash. Not what I usually do. I usually want to preserve the curl, so I only add the mascara to the tips. But in this case, this mascara is so light that you can easily just go in across the entire length. And also because I'm not really trying to keep the lashes upright, is another reason why I'm applying it all the way to the root. The wand is also super tiny and precise, which is another reason why I love it. Quickly gonna curl the lower lashes like that. And then I'm gonna go back to the Joa liner that I love so much. And I'm gonna add my twiggies just in those spaces where I might be missing lashes, where I want a little more lash, a little more fullness, like that. Mmm, mm, feeling cute. I actually am gonna reach for a shade in one of the Prince palettes, this crystal ball over here, and just add a pinch of that to the very inner corner. You see that? Poppin'. Also wanna add that right here for a little crystal action. Yeah, cute. And I honestly wanted to add falsies, but I don't think I'm gonna add falsies. I feel like this looks very approachable and just a little bit more authentic. I like how this looks. I like that it's glam without being super glam. It's still very, very wearable. So I think I'm just gonna keep it as is. No falsies, even though I do have some falsies that I've been loving and reaching for a lot. And it's this pair of Kiss Magnetic Lashes in the style Entice. These are so easy and so great to use. And I've talked about them in another video that you should definitely check out. But since I'm not applying them, I'm not gonna talk about them right now, but I will in a different video. All right, moving right along to some highlighters. I mentioned to you guys that I've been reaching a lot for this highlighter in the 4 Scope Fire palette. This one's called Blaze and it's very pretty and I definitely very much like it. However, there's been another highlighter palette that I've been reaching for a lot. And it is the Huda Beauty Light Glow Obsessions palette. This one right here with a very iconic packaging that not a lot of people love, but I quite like, I think it's cool. But specifically this highlighter right here is the one that I've been reaching for a lot. It has just this very gorgeous pearlescence and a shift between white gold and pink. I'm actually gonna apply this to my cheek 
and hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. I mean, all these shades are great, but specifically this one I've been liking a lot because it has that pinkiness. It just plays so well with blushes and doesn't give you that crazy 2018 highlighter glow. This is a little bit more subtle and a little bit more current and wearable, I would say. So I have been liking it. I've been reaching for it a lot. It looks so pretty in the sun. It also looks really pretty on the nose bridge, just like all the high points of your face. So this was a hit. This was a fave for me. Now in the fail category this month, sadly, I did not love the Joa highlighter. This one is called Crystal Glow Jelly Bomb Highlighter. It feels very cushiony, almost like a ColourPop shadow. It also looks very crystally, just very, very gorgeous. But I think this is a little too much shimmer and just a little too metallic to be an actual highlighter. It gives that wet skin effect that doesn't necessarily look good on the cheekbones. If you have very fair skin, this is something that you could probably wear on your collarbones or even on your body, down the shins, or maybe like on your chest somewhere. But for me, this was just too much shimmer, not enough color. That's basically it. So again, you're not gonna like every single product from a brand, just like here. I love the liner, did not love the highlighter, just like here. And I mean, just like here for the most part, even with formulations, sometimes you will like a certain color in a formula, but then you'll try a different color and it will be a completely different formula. So you have to keep that in mind. Oh my gosh, you guys, we are almost done with the video. Huh? I am up to my last fave and it's in the lip category. I already talked about it last month. It's the Huda Beauty Lip Contour 2.0 lip pencils that I've been wearing pretty much every single day. There are so many great wearable shades, so many lovely, just like nude, warm, pinky shades and variations of all of those. Also, they're very, very creamy so you can wear them as a lip liner or as an all over color. So today let's go for the shade Pinky Brown, I believe that's the one on my lips already, but I'm just gonna reline. And for something new today, I'm gonna reach for this House Labs, what is this exactly? PHD Lip Hybrid Oil Stain. I'm gonna reach for the orange one. The shade is called Secondary. So this is supposed to look different on everyone depending on your pH balance levels. I'm hoping it'll still give me an orangey tint. I don't want it to go pink on me. I'm gonna start with just a little bit. I think it's turning pink on me, but it is a very pretty pink. Kind of almost looks like the back of my cheekbone, like that blush color from Natasha Denona. So although I wanted to go for something a little bit more orange, I think this worked out and I like the way that it looks. That is my faves X fails video for the month of May, uploaded in June as per usual, as always. Team Truth style reviews is what you can expect from me on this channel from now until forever. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I actually had a lot of fun putting this video together and just slapping on all this makeup, a lot of which I really, really loved. I don't think I've had as many fails this month as I've had in my previous months. So this is a really good month in makeup. Two thumbs up for that. And with that said, I am going to zoom on out so that you can check out my other videos over here that I put for a reason so that you can click on them and watch more me for you. I love you guys. See you in the next one. Mwah.